From the first time you were introduced to it, you can't lie, asylums were never considered a good, joyful place, but instead were always a place of mistreatment and neglect. Maybe this was used because they used to treat all sorts of mental illnesses, or maybe there's some truth to that. I managed to find the top 10 asylums the government doesn't want you to know existed. I'm your host Andrew, and let's get right into this. At a number 10 spot, we have the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. The Bethlehem Royal Hospital, also known as Bedlam, is a psychiatric hospital located in London, England. It is considered to be the oldest psychiatric hospital in the world, with a history dating back to the 13th century. Over the years, the hospital has gained a reputation for being extremely haunted, and many people claim to have had paranormal experiences there. One of the most famous paranormal experiences at the Bethlehem Royal Hospital is that with the ghost of a former patient named Rosie. According to the legend, Rosie was a young woman who was admitted to the hospital in the 18th century after having an extreme mental breakdown. She was allegedly kept in a padded cell and subjected to cruel treatments, including being tied to a chair and left alone for long periods at a time. It is said that she eventually died in the hospital and her ghost now haunts the corridors and the cells. Another famous ghost story associated with the hospital involves the ghost of a man named James Norris, who was admitted there in 1725. Norris was a former sailor who developed severe mental health issues after being shipwrecked and forced to eat his own crewmates to survive. Yeah, pretty gruesome. When he was eventually admitted to the hospital, he was treated with harsh methods, including being bled, blistered, and even purged. Norris is said to have died in the hospital and his ghost is also rumored to haunt the halls. He is known to bang on the walls and doors of the hospital during the nights. So yeah. A lot of bad things happen here and still remain here. At a number 9 spot with the Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane. The Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane was a psychiatric hospital located in Willard, New York. It was founded in 1869 and operated all the way until 1995 when it closed due to allegations of patient abuse and neglect. The Willard Asylum was designed to be a state-of-the-art facility for the care and treatment of individuals with chronic mental illness. It was built on a spacious rural campus with the main building and several satellite buildings, and it was also equipped with the latest medical and therapeutic equipment. Patients at Willard were given a variety of treatments, including medications, psychotherapy, and electroconvulsive therapy. And despite its initial promise to helping people, the Willard Asylum faced many challenges Challenges and many controversies over the years, which did the complete opposite. One of the most significant was the overcrowding of the hospital, which led to inadequate care for many of the patients. There are also reports of physical and emotional abuse amongst patients, as well as neglect and mistreatment, as I mentioned before. In 1995, following a series of investigations and lawsuits, the Willard Asylum was eventually shut down and its patients were relocated to other facilities. Today, the former hospital campus is abandoned and it's a haunting reminder of the troubled history of psychiatric care in the United States. Number 8, the Whittingham Asylum. The Whittingham Asylum was a psychiatric hospital located in Lancashire, England. The hospital was in operation from 1873 all the way until 1995, and during its time, it gained a reputation for having many abuse scandals and mistreatment of many patients. This inevitably caused many people to believe that their spirit stayed inside of the asylum even after death. One of the most famous ghosts caught here is the ghost of a former patient named Elizabeth. Story goes that Elizabeth was admitted to the hospital in the late 18th after being diagnosed with severe depression. She was allegedly being kept in the hospital for over 30 years, and during that time, she was subjected to harsh treatments, including being confined to a straitjacket and also locked in a padded cell. After reading about the things done to her, it was just terrible to think they actually happened. You can all read it in the written notes online about this asylum. It is said that Elizabeth eventually passed away in the hospital, and her ghost now haunts everywhere inside of this place. Number 7 spot with the Castello de Vicarello. The Castello de Vicarello is a beautiful castle located in the heart of Tuscany, Italy. Built in the Middle Ages, the castle has a long and storied history, and is said to be haunted by the ghost of a young girl who passed away on the property. According to the legend, the girl was the daughter of a wealthy nobleman who lived inside of this place. She was a playful and carefree child, and she lived to explore the castle and all of its grounds. However, one day, while playing hide and seek with her friends, she stumbled upon a hidden passageway in the castle and wandered inside. Unfortunately, the the passageway was a trap, and the girl became lost in the castle's winding corridors. She wandered for hours, calling out for help, but no one could hear her. Finally, exhausted and scared, she collapsed and passed away in the dark, damp passageway. Since then, the ghost of the young girl has been seen by many who visit the castle. Some say they have heard her laughter and footsteps echoing through the halls, while others have reported seeing her ghostly figure wandering the castle grounds. Number 6, the Dauphine Orleans Hotel. The Dauphine Orleans Hotel is a historic hotel located in the 
French Quarter of New Orleans, Louisiana. According to the hotel's legend, the building is haunted by the ghost of a former pirate who was hung on the property. The pirate, who was known for his ruthless and violent behavior, was captured by the authorities and sentenced to execution here. He was hanged from a tree on the hotel's property, and now his ghost is said to have remained there ever since. People who have said to stay at the Dauphin Orleans Hotel have reported strange and unsettling experiences here. Some have heard the ghostly footsteps of the pirate wandering the halls at night, while others have reported seeing this ghostly figure staring at them from their window with his head bent, as if he had just been hung. Scary sight for many, but that doesn't stop people from coming to this place. Right in the hump of our list, we have the Rolling Hills Asylum. Located in East Bethany, New York, this asylum was originally named the Genesee County Poor Farm. A poorhouse is a place where orphan children, families, elderly, and where physically and mentally handicapped people go. All of the people who passed away at the asylum were buried on the property grounds as well, which led many people to believe it's haunted all throughout. The favorite entity spotted here is that of a guy named Roy Cruz. It is said the owner had an encounter with Roy the ghost. One day she went in and a rat went across the room. The rat startled her and she screamed and just left the asylum. The next day she came back and she noted the rat that startled her was found dead on the stairs with blood oozing out of it. Above that was a bloody handprint, presumably with the blood of the cat. She believes it was Roy helping her as the rat startled her pretty badly, but was it the cat or was it Roy the ghost? Over 1,700 people passed away and were buried on these grounds. So it seems like Roy is not the only ghost you'll be encountering here, and chances are he is probably not the one who killed the rat. Number four, the Aloy Psychiatric Hospital. Located in Westland, Michigan, it was named after Detroit's postmaster, Alois Davik. In 1839, the Aloy Psychiatric Hospital started off as a poorhouse and a farm where the poor, the sick, and the needy would go for shelter and work. As time went by, the poorhouse transitioned into a psychiatric asylum and hospital. The buildings were self-sufficient, even having their own police. They're even one of the first hospitals to use x-rays for diagnosis, so at least one good thing came out of here. At its peak, the place housed over 10,000 patients and over 2,000 staff members. After its closure in 1984, the hospital's abandoned grounds are said to have a few patients left inside. Ghost patients, that is. There have been a few reports of people finding medical waste and other strange items. Some have reported finding jars containing real human body parts, as well as documents outlining strange medical procedures. Paranormal investigators have conducted numerous investigations on the ground. Then more recently, a group recently claimed to have seen a spirit of a woman wearing all white, often seen on the upper floors and the roof of this hospital. Number three, the San Haven Sanatorium. The San Haven Sanatorium, otherwise known as the Sanatorium of Death, was built in 1911. And ever since, it has been a hotspot for paranormal investigators due to the dark history attached to it. When the place was active, much of it was used to treat those sick with tuberculosis. And the issue was, the cure didn't come until 1946, which gave over 30 years of deaths due to this illness. Eventually, the need for the sanatorium died down, and the place ended up closing in 1989. After being repurchased, it was found that over a thousand people passed away inside of this place, with the majority of them being in unmarked graves. To make matters worse, many satanic worshippers have made their way here to perform rituals using pentagrams and sacrifice. Even ghost adventures made their way here and even spoke with another spirit inside of this property. Others believe that the patients of this place were badly mistreated, which just gives them way more reasons for their haunting. At number two spot with the Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. Trenton Psychiatric Hospital, originally named New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum, has a long history of helping mentally ill patients and even harming them. The hospital opened in 1848 and welcomed 86 patients originally. The first superintendent, Horace Butolf, was a good man and provided excellent care for the people in his care. Then it took a turn for the worse when Dr. Henry Cotton took over. The doctor believed he could cure mental illness by removing organs. He believed that infections caused mental illness, so he tested it by removing his patient's teeth, limbs, or any body part with slight signs of infection. This would cause dozens of patients to pass away. And many visitors still claim that you could hear the screams of his patients inside of the wall of the hospital. Others even claim to see the apparition of Dr. Cotton himself and other ghosts with missing limbs. Unfortunately, after his passing in 1933, a review found his medical procedures caused 45% of his patients to perish. The irony was, the doctor was clinically insane as well. Number one, the Penhurst Asylum. So, Penhurst Asylum began as a school for the disabled in 1908, but it didn't take long until it took a turn for the worse. So much happened at this asylum, so let me just give you guys a touch of what this place is about. A patient who suffered in the asylum eventually sued them in a federal class action lawsuit. The reason was because they violated the patient's 8th and 14th Amendment rights, which are to provide appropriate care and education. 
So, what did they do? Well, some of the alleged abuses included strapping adult patients into children's cribs, lacing problematic patients, drinks and foods, physically hitting patients, and also when patients would bite a doctor, they would rip their teeth out to ensure it would never happen again. This caused many patients to pass away in this very hospital and eventually they closed their doors in 1987. Well, these are the top 10 asylums the government doesn't want you to know existed. What do you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your opinions and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for some more content. I'm yours, Andrew, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.